Hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. Today we're going to play. Uh, I hope you are uh, willing to watch lots of maybe accidents or um, <laughs> uh, lots of mess because we are going to play a little bit. I want to make some uh, abstract watercolor tags and um, I am just going to use some of the old um, sprays and inks that I have in my stash that have just been there forever and I need to use them up. So I thought this would be a really easy way to use that up and get me some abstract looking um, pieces for my layered tags. It's just gonna be two layers, I think, right now, I think that's all it's gonna be. This is a large piece of watercolor paper. I want to leave this on. I thought that would be cute to add to one of the tags, maybe. I'm, but I am gonna cut this in half just so that I can get it in my pan. So I'm gonna off to the side over here. I know you're not gonna be able to see that, but I am just cutting it eyeballing it, cutting it in half, so that way, oh, that's pretty good, Melina, you did a pretty good job of that, <laughs> so that I can get it into the um, water pan really easily. I thought about going ahead and cutting up the pieces, but um, I think it's going to be easier if I just do two large pieces, let them dry, and then if I want to stamp on them, whatever, um, and then cut it apart, kind of like masterboard. Maybe that's what this is, a watercolor masterboard, who knows. But I have some craft and ivory cardstock that I'm gonna cut into the tag shape and then um, stamp or something like a background on these and then cut the pieces that get watercolored smaller than the tag base and just kind of uh, maybe even use some foam tape and mount it on top. You will see when I get to that point. But um, I wanted to go with just a few little, maybe some fallish type colors. We'll see, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. But this is called Dragonfly and it's by Tattered Angels. And I'm just putting a little drop of each of the colors I want to use in here. This is Abandoned Coral from Timothy Holtz. Putting that little bit in there. Uh, Y'all know that that's probably like my favorite color ever. This is some um, Lindy's that is Passionate Plum. I thought that would be pretty, maybe there and it's got shimmer to it so i'm really looking forward to how that looks uh this is also a lindy's and it is gator gumbo olive so add that and it's got some shimmer to it too so crossing fingers that that looks all right i've got some hickory smoke that's Tim Holtz, and it's got like uh, it's black, but it's got a purple, dark purple hue to it, also. All right, and then I've got fossiled amber, and I'm going to finish these off before they dry completely. I'm going to put some uh, vintage photo oxide splatters on it. All right, and then I'm going to go around where I can still see the bottom of my pan and add that. Okay, and then I'm thinking maybe a couple of splatters of white. Now, I don't know how that's going to affect all of this. We will see. But I just wanted to try it out. All right, so there are all of my colors. I'm going to get gloved up. All right, and it's looking really like clouds with that white in there. I like that. All right, so I'm just gonna go with it. I've got some paper towels off to the side that I will lay these on, and then I will get them on old bath towels to um, 
dry completely. Let me move this out of the way so I've got a straight shot to my paper towel once it comes out of here. All right, here goes nothing. We're just gonna, this is watercolor paper. I'm just dipping it down. I'm gonna do both sides. Oh goodness, I love that. I'm just gonna try to get a few more of the little, oh, it's got kind of like a fallish theme to it. I love that. Okay. So there's one. And I mean, it's very muted. It's not meant to be like the most uh, vivid colors ever. That green is really uh, being prominent in there. And then once you get it kind of uh, scraped at the bottom, see some of these are old, so you know, they're gonna, look at that. They're gonna really clump up on you because it's, it's old, they're old. So this is like my um, dyeing sessions that I do. And I'm gonna leave that right there and I'm gonna get this abandoned coral and I'm gonna do a few drops like that. I like how that looks. And then I'll just take that right up and then I'll put the other one back in there and do the same thing to it. Here is the dragonfly that is that tattered angels color. And then let's see, let's do the Lindy's purple. We've got a lot of that green, so let's do the purple. All right, and then we're gonna take that up. Pretty, I like that. Okay. So we're gonna put that one off to the side over here. Put this one back down. And I'm gonna do fossilized amber. Okay, and then let's do some of this shimmery green that is Lindy's, and that's the prominent parts here, but I still like that that green gives us a really fall look and then let's do some of this white and see what it see what it gives us when we put it down there right on the paper it looks cute but then it gets on the um the green puddles and it just kind of sits there Okay, so I like that. I like the little splatters we got with that. So I'm going to put these off to the side. I'm gonna take them and let them start drying. And then we are going to um, do more splattering to it, do a little more paint, a little more mixed media maybe. And then I'll show you how I'm cutting out the shapes and adding them to the tags. All right, and for my tag bases, I have cut them, let's see, three inches by five and a half inches. And then I will use my angle corner chomper to cut my corners there and I'm using the large angle. There's also a small angle, but I thought for this big of a tag, I need to do the large angle. So I'm gonna do that on all of my bases. And I hope that I get 
all of these done. That would be amazing with some abstract watercolor centers layered on them. That would be very, very cute. All right, so there are my tag shapes. And then I need to get my um, crocodile. And I need to go ahead and cut out my circle in the middle. I'm going to try to cut every one of these. I don't know that, <laughs> that I'll be able to manhandle that enough to get all of them or not, but I'm going to try. Let's see. And I probably need to put something down showing the center, but I didn't. I just put it on there. Hey, that looks pretty good to me. All right. And then I'm going to cut out. I won't put these on now, but I'm going to cut out little reinforced um, circles for the holes. And I'm going to do ivory on this one, craft on that one. So I'll need to do one, two, three four, so eight. So I need four of each one. And we've had um, a couple of people ask about this uh, punch. We offer it in our shop and we've had some people say, it's not working. It doesn't work for me. Um, this is a tiny little precise punch and it does not punch like any other punch I've ever used. It does work. It's just very tiny and precise. Your punched piece will not come out of the bottom. It's gonna come out where the slit is. Now, for anybody that's used this punch for years, don't worry about it, I'm not, <laughs> you're, you're good and you know how to use it. I'm talking to the ones that have had some issues and I'm just gonna put my cardstock in there. It is not going to come out of the bottom and you're going to punch and that's all you're gonna hear. As long as you've punched all the way down, that's all you're gonna hear. There is your circle and there is your little reinforced piece that's going to go on your tag. See? Just like that. That's all there is to it. Your little piece, your little reinforced circle is not going to come out the bottom. It's going to come out of this slit here. So you're going to see all the way down. You're going to see your hole. Turn your punch sideways. There's your little reinforced hole. All you're going to hear is a little bit of a crunch. That's all you hear with this punch. And then there is your reinforced hole. All right, so I've got three. There's my fourth one for that. And now I need to make my ivory ones for my craft tags. There's one, two, three, four. All right. And now for these bases, they're going to have this little rectangle piece of watercolor in the middle of them. So to show on the outer edges of it, I want to do some background stamping. I think I'll go with rich cocoa. And I'm gonna go with bamboo leaves and let's do teal zeal. I love that. Yeah, let's just leave out black all, all together. Let's just do those three colors. We're gonna do background and I'm going to do first this wood. I mean, this is huge. When's the last time you've seen one of these? Huge. Um, this is from Stamp It Up. Uh, wood grain background stamp. And I'm going to do it in the rich cocoa. 
and I'm just gonna run it down first, all the way across. And then I'm gonna tap, tap, tap. And we could almost probably get two tags done with this side by side. But yeah, we could do it that way, but I wanna go up and down. So I'm just gonna lay my tag down and then stamp my background stamp on top of it and press pretty hard and try not to move it. And then pick up, now you've got some absent spots right there, just like in the middle of it where I didn't press down hard enough. But remember, we're gonna have um, a piece on there on the middle. And I'm gonna ink around the edges so I don't think I'm going to mess with trying to fix that. Um, let's do one of the craft ones like that. And then I've got another uh, messy background that I want to do. So I'm gonna go up and down, up and down, then pat, 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 and just get the entire stamp covered. And if I'm jiggling the camera any, I apologize. I was doing that pretty hard. All right, then I'm going to flip it upside down and just press mostly in the middle since it looks like that's where I need the most pressure anyways. Press, press, press. And I've still got an absent spot, but like I said, that's gonna be covered up. So I'm good with that. I like that, very pretty. All right, I'm going to wipe this stamp off and I'm gonna go with my, let's see what this one's called. This other one is called Sanded. It is also from Stamp It Up. I have no clue if these are still available. You'll just have to look on the Stamp It Up website, but it's just like sandpaper marks. I love that. So let's go with the um, Rich Cocoa again and just run it up and down, up and down, and then pat, pat, pat. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of the bamboo leaves and the teal zeal around on it too. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of teal zeal right there. I mean, bamboo leaves right there. And then a little bit of teal zeal there. and get one of my ivory ones and just straight down and then push and try not to move it okay yes i can see the olive just a little bit of a hint of olive over here and then that teal zeal is really showing right there i love that one very pretty all right, let's do a craft one the same way. Bamboo, I mean, uh, Rich Cocoa. I'm getting all of these names all mixed up. Rich Cocoa. And then some bamboo leaves here on the edge. And then some teal zeal on the edge there. And flip it over. Stamp down and just hold down. Press, press, press. Oh, cute. Yep. You can really see the um, olive and teal in that one. Very pretty. All right, I'm gonna wipe this one off. Okay, and now we're gonna go with like a dictionary page. I've used this on a video before. Um, let me see where my huge stamp block is. And let's try to get this one off. This one usually gives me a fit every time I try to take it off of its backer. Yep, it did. I think that is a I think that's from Fiskars. 
It's like dictionary words. And we will see how this looks on here. We'll have to do it a couple of times, maybe three times down that um, tag to get it all on there. And I'm thinking on this one, I just want to do the rich cocoa. And I want the wording to be up and down, so I'm just going to stamp it like that, up and down and not sideways. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. All right, so now I know that I don't even need to um, ink up that side. I can just ink up the one edge over here. And stamp it over and over if I want to. Oh yeah, I really like these. And there, oh I like that. It's kind of ghosted there, but I like that. I like how that turned out. Let's do a craft one. all around might as well just do the whole thing okay and there and then pick up and do that edge and let's just do this one side here right there and then ghost it there. Oh, I will like that. And then let's just do this one part here for the bottom. Good, good, good. I like that. And now I think I will just use the same one but then mingle in some of the green and teal also so let's do a little bit of the green a little bit of the teal Ooh, i think i'm gonna like that <laughs> yes i really love that it's upside down but i really love <laughs> oh well i'm good with that it don't have to be perfect look at there i did the upside down on that that one too oh well all right and then let's do a little where it's just olive or I mean it's going to be a little mingled but let's do it where it's mostly just olive oh yeah I like that and then let's do some cocoa oh yeah I like that I like how that turned out okay and then let's do the craft and I think this teal is going to look beautiful on that craft. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That is pretty. I think I will just do teal on this craft one since that is my favorite color. Let's just do that all the way down. It's upside down, Melina. It's upside down. Oh, well. Y'all know me by now that I'm not a stickler when it comes to stuff like that. All right, so let's wipe this one off. And I think I'm going to go ahead and get my walnut stain ink out. And I'm going to ink my edges. I love that defined look. Of an inked edge so let's go ahead and do that and then we'll put on our um, reinforced rings I'm just gonna line these up and get my little reinforced rings ready to put on and I just use a little dabble of 
liquid glue. Now here is where, if you had one of these teeny tiny little um, quilling bottles with the fine tip, or if you have the fine tip that we can, um, we get with the art glitter glue. This was, this little quilling bottle was gifted to me and I love it so much that I decided to see if we couldn't get it at scrapbookingwithme.com. And guess what? We can, yay. <laughs> so, be looking for those coming soon. We should have them next week. I uh, got them ordered yesterday. So I'm just using that fine tip of the quilling bottle and putting on my reinforced ring and I will do this one and then I'll do one on the ivory one and then I won't make you watch the rest because it's that easy. All right, so this one, this little craft one, I'm just barely putting a little line of glue around it and then just centering it up on that hole. Okay, so that is all of my little reinforced rings on. And these tags are pretty just as is, but we're going to pretty them up even more with our watercolor centers. Here is our first um, watercolor piece. It's still damp. Um, and I'm going to spritz it with some fresh water just around on it and then I'm going to get these um, spritz sprays that I had out and I'm going to just kind of splatter it about and that purple Lindy's that is so pretty, but I have had it a while, so it's kind of, it's getting a little slimy. So I need to get it used up. And then a little bit of the dragonfly on places that doesn't have any, maybe. All right, and then if you don't like how concentrated something is, just kind of spray around on it. And that'll make the colors run. Oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I like the how it's run quite a bit when it gets sprayed with water. And then I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm just gonna go through and blot the excess water off. Okay, I like that, pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to get my what I like colors and that is the um, vintage photo. And then I also got a new bottle of the um, tarnished brass. So I'm gonna open that up and keep my fingers out of the way because I've been there, done that, trying to open a package with these scissors and stab myself with them in the finger. It was horrible. Okay, so tarnished brass really love the look of this. And since this is still pretty damp, it's starting to run pretty good already. But then I will get it going a little bit more with some more water spritzing. Oh, that was pretty, the way that hit there and spread out. 
Yes, really like that, the way that looks. And then, while this is still wet, I'm gonna get, that was just regular, that's not oxide. That's just regular tarnished brass. This is oxide vintage photo. Now, I'm not going to spritz this one further because when it dries, it leaves the prettiest marks. So I'm not going to do any um, water spritzing on top of this. It's just lovely as is, especially when it dries. It gives that oxidation look to it. It's very pretty. All right, so I'm going to move this somehow. I think I'm just gonna pick up nonstick mat and all, and I'm gonna take this to my um, dining room table. Oh, I like the look of that. I like how that's going. When I went to pick it up, it just started running, so I'm just going with it. Oh yeah, see that's getting me my vintage colors that I like. Because I didn't want it to be too bright anyway, so I'm really liking that. I'm going to take this to my dining room table and we'll do the other sheet. All right, I'm gonna wipe off most of what was on the other one. And then get this sheet over here. And I think I am just going to do two colors and then my browns. So I'm gonna do <clears throat> some black soot. Oop, I almost dropped it, some black soot. And I'm just gonna splatter this. And I think I'm gonna leave this as is. I did not um, put I didn't spritz water on this before. And I like how this one is already looking. So I'm not going to um, do any water spritzing to spread this, cause I like this, I like that. Um, let's do some of that green from Lindy's, see how that looks when I go to splatter it. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay. Oh, and you get a lot of splatters with one little dip out of that one. I'm not gonna do the abandoned coral. I think I'm gonna leave it like that and then do a little bit Tarnished brass. There. And then I will do my vintage photo oxide. Oh yeah. I think I am going to like this one better than the one with all the heavy water spritzing. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that one as is. I'm gonna let it dry, I'm gonna wipe up around it. I'm gonna let it dry. I might go in with my um, heat tool in just a little bit to help it, but I don't want to move that around too much right now. So I'm just gonna let her dry Look at these finished pieces. Here is the one that we did not add um, any water um, spray to once we put the speckles down. I love that look. And then this one is the one that we did do quite a bit of water spraying to. And so it's more muted. It's more um, like a tea or coffee stain kind of paper. It is a little more muted than this one is, but I love both. And I need to, let's see, I'm going to cut 
from both papers. Now I'm gonna not gonna cut both of these the exact same sizes, um, every bit of it, because I'm only needing you know four pieces and four pieces, so eight pieces. I've got three by five tags. I'm thinking that I want to do a two inch, yep, two inch wide by four and a half inch. So I'm just gonna cut that real quick and see if that is something that's gonna work on these tags. And if not, of course I can use this piece on something else. But I'm thinking two inches by four and a half inches. Let's just go ahead and cut the two inch mark. I don't know, that looks a little thin. Let's go two and a half. Two and a half inches. I have to go a little hard on that one because it is watercolor paper, so sorry if I hurt anybody's ears doing that. Let's go two and a half by four and a half. Okay. Oh, look at that. Two and a half by four and a half. Okay, so I need it. Let's go two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. There. Cut that little strip off. And then let's go four and a quarter. Let's see what that gives us. Okay. Oh, yeah, I like that. So that is um, a three make sure for you three inch by five and a half inch tag and then we're putting on two and a quarter by four and a quarter is that right two yep two and a quarter by four and a quarter rectangles on the fronts of them i think i want to let's just make this first one Let's make this first one first. I think I want to round my corners of it. Okay, and then I will, of course, ink my edges. I've got this little branch stamp, leaves. Okay, and then my Brilliance Graphite, Graphite Black Ink. I'm just gonna do it on the one piece. So let's stamp that pretty good. And then, so that the stem is just kinda hanging off the edge at the bottom. Pretty. Oh, I like that. And then maybe a word stamp. I don't want to do too much to these tags. They speak for themselves. I like, I like this look. Okay, so I got a Tracy Fox. Yep, Tracy Fox label. Oh yeah, to put it right there. Okay, so I'm going to put this on with some, let's see, I don't think I have any foam tape, so I'll have to use these dots. We'll have to get some more foam tape in the shop. All right, so the watercolor paper is a little wonky just because um, I did use the heat tool on it to dry it a little bit. So I'll have to add just a few more um, foam dots or foam than what I would normally do for other things. So there is what I'm gonna use on the back taking off all the little backing. 
And see, foam tape would be so much easier. Just um, put a strip down it and be done. But we'll have to order some more of that and get it in the shop. Let's see, that looks pretty good to me. Hold that down. And then I'm gonna put that on where it's just hanging off just a little bit there, but I'll put it on with some liquid glue. Just won't go all the way to the edge. Now that is cute. I like that. A little too high there, Melina. There we go. Very cute. And we still have to put in some um, ribbon or something at the top there. We will get that done in a minute. Let's do a let's do a craft one here and since this has that teal in it I thought that that would go really good on top of this one so let's get my ruler yeah two and a quarter four and a quarter what is this one <laughs> did I mess up I've got four I've got four by two and a quarter here so let's just use this piece. I was really wanting to use the piece that had that on top. Let's see what that looks like. Is it too little? No, I like that. And I'm just gonna round my bottom corners. Oh yeah, that's cute. And then ink. around the edges and then I'm going to go across those a little heavier. Cutie patootie right there. All right and then maybe since this one's a little more fun and flirty I thought about doing a little flirtier stamp something that's a little out of my wheelhouse, but I had bought it one time or another that I, because I thought it was very cute. This is from Felicity Jane. It is the Brie collection. It was, uh, I don't know, might have been a couple of years ago. And this is the little lady, Brie herself. And I thought it would be very cute. I don't know, it might not be whenever we do it. I don't know. I think that's going to be very, very cute. Let's do some inking. I like this so far. Yep. Let's get her all on there and then stamp straight down. So maybe she won't be blurry. Oh, wow. Yep. I like that. That's cute. This little memories piece. And did it up and down there. Oh, yeah. I need to cut it a little better since I cut it out wonky. Is that any better? Oh, yeah, it is. Good, good, good. Ink the edges of it. Very pretty. And let's put on my foam tape. All right. And then get our little label put down. maybe toward the bottom there. So two tags, two totally different um, kinds. And I like this part here. As far as style goes is what I'm talking about. Um, I'm thinking this one on this. 
and let's see. Let's try just doing those two corners. Ooh, I like that. And ink the edges. And I don't know if you can see that the best, but it's got some really great shimmer in it. I really like that. All right, and let's do... <laughs> How about a tree? Let's do a tree on this one. Okay, I'm thinking, yep, let's do this little pretty tree. And let's hope it is a cheaper stamp. Let's see, let me make sure that's going on. Oh yeah, it comes out rather good. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I like that. And maybe one of these pretty little gold butterflies on there too. Let's do maybe this one. I like that. And then I don't think we even need to add a um, word or anything to this one. When I go to use it on whatever project I'm going to use it on, I might add something later. But I think that's good to go as is with just that little butterfly on there. Pretty. So that's what we've got done so far. I'm really liking these. All right, let's do another piece of this. Let's do it on some craft. Let's see. Let's do this. And let's cut a two and a fourth by four and a fourth piece. Hmm, I really want that purple. So let's do that. And then here, four and fourth. Okay. Oh yeah, that purple is very pretty in that. And I'm thinking that needs to be the top. I want to round all the corners. And then ink my edges. And I'm dirtying this one up just a little bit more than I did any of the other ones. Just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. Oh, wow, yep, that's pretty. And I think, so I won't cover up too much of all of that. I think I will just do this little beady tree down here on the bottom. We'll see how I like that. Oh, yeah, I like that. I think I'll ghost there. Yep, pretty. Okay. And then I got a little bitty Tracy Fox label. And I'm going to add that here. Oh, that's cute. I know I say that so much. I say cute all the time. But it is. All right, and get that 
pretty straight. But I just don't think I'm going to cover up too much more of that because I really like how that looks. So let's get our foam on the back. Okay, there is that one on. And our others here that we've made. Okay, so this one and round my corners. and ink my edges. I really like that um, notepad look at the top. And then this one is gonna look like it got splattered with some coffee on the edge. Okay, I've got this and I think I'm gonna go in with my walnut stain instead of the black ink that I've been using through here. I'm gonna go in with my walnut stain. That's cute. Yep, I like that. And then let's do another one maybe right there. Yep. And power of three. Let's do another one. There. Oh, I like that one. This one might turn out to be my favorite of all of them. And yep, yeah, I've left myself enough room that I can add a larger label. And so. Cut that out. Got Shabby Dabby Doo Daw and Tracy Fox. And I think I'm just going to layer them on top of each other and go ahead and put it on straight on here first. And then when I put it down, making sure that it's not hanging off of the main tag and it's not. So I like that. I think I'm gonna go up with it just a little bit. Okay, so there is that one done. And let's go ahead and get some, I still have tags, I still have plenty of watercolor paper still left over here, but let's go ahead and get some twine and uh, maybe some seam binding put in the tops of these. Okay, got some kind of sheer ribbon. I'll put on here, see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's cute. And got some peach here that I think would really go with that one. Let's do about that long and see if we've got enough. Yep, like that. And then I guess I need to get out maybe some just regular crochet thread and I think I'm gonna double it up. So let's do two pieces. Since it's so thin, I think I'll do this on the rest of them. Because I've got more ribbon, but just here lately, I'm not much of a ribbon girl. I like just the simple, yep, that's cute. Just some crochet thread and go with it. I do have this lace over here. I guess I could do one with crochet thread and lace. We'll see how it looks. Let's do this one. Okay, there's that one, cute. All right, let's try 
lace and a couple of pieces of crochet thread. I'm not going to need it this long, but I'd rather have it a little longer and be able to get that library knot in there than too short and not be able to. All right, so I need to get it tiny right there where I'm going to put it through so that I can get a good pull. There we go. Okay, we're going. Let's see how it works. Oh yeah, that's my favorite one of all. All right, and then I'm going to straighten up my lace. There we go. Oh yeah, that is my favorite one of all of them. Look at that, that's pretty. All right, so there are my abstract watercolor layered tags. I hope you enjoyed that. And like I said, I still have plenty of the watercolor left to do more tags or use it elsewhere. I'll show you what I have left here. And it's good sturdy pieces too. So, I mean, I could just make regular tags out of these and um, use them in my journals if I want to. But I thought these turned out rather well. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. And if you make these, please be sure to tag me. Let me know that you've made them. I want to see them. So I'll put this back behind it a little bit. I'm going to give you some still shots at the end. I hope you enjoyed this process. And I know it was a hot mess at the very beginning. But I'm so glad you stuck around with me. And um, went through the entire process with me to see how it all turned out. Y'all have a blessed day. Thanks for being here. Love ya. Bye, y'all.